Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Office Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Abandoned Ship, written by Traumatized Waffle. All crew, I repeat, abandoned ship, crackled the intercom, the voice of the captain sounding terribly strained. The floor beneath me shook violently, and I slammed into the wall for a moment before getting back on my feet and continuing my mad dash to the escape pods. Hell breach and deck four, no life signs detected, crackled the intercom again, this time computerized voice taking the place of the captain's. I chose not to think about the many other Traxians that had been assigned to the deck fall as I continued onward. I turned a corner and stopped, looking into the escape pod bay. I shifted my gaze frantically across the different pods. Almost all of them had a display that read, Ejected, in red letters. Finally, I spotted the green glow of an unejected pod at the end of the hall. Morning, power cascade faded detected. Fusion meltdown imminent, blared the automated warning system. I took that as a sign to get out of here and raced towards the pod. I pressed the button on the wall opening the pod. I scrambled in, sat down, slamming my palm down onto the auto-eject button. The pod system began warming up and I strapped myself in. Suddenly, there was a banging on the pod door. I looked through the porthole and saw another crewman frantically pounding on the door. Please... Please, please let me in. All the other pods are gone, shouted the crew member. I looked at them, then towards the pod controls, and then back to them. They were still banging on the pod door. I felt a tinge of guilt shoot through me, and I pressed the button on the control panel, unsealing the pod door. The person fell through just in time for the safeguards to reseal the door. Uh, thank you, thank you so much, they exclaimed. Shut up and strap yourself in. We're about to eject, I shouted back. Fusion meltdown detected. Reactor containment failure in 15 seconds, reported the pod's onboard computer. The crew member sat down and yanked on the straps across their torso. There was a hissing noise, and the pod was violently wrenched from the Blumian's hull. I looked out the portal just in time for the reactor containment to fail, nearly blinding me. Morning, pod systems damaged, reaction control system offline, crackled the onboard computer, which was obviously also on the verge of failing. Oh, what, is, what does that mean? The question the crew member. It means they were in big trouble. We can't control the pod's trajectory, I shot back, clinging to my seat straps. The crew member's eyes widened, and they began to freak out. What do we do? What, what do we do? stammered the crew member, who I'd finally identified as Ramius from Logistics. We hope the pod isn't in a dangerous trajectory, I shrugged, doing my utmost to contain my terror. Suddenly, as if the universe itself heard me, the onboard computer crackled to life. Proximity warning, trajectory obstructed, it crackled, before finally shooting up sparks and dying. I looked over at Ramius, who had resigned himself to squinting, his eyes shut and whimpering. I looked out the portal and could see that our trajectory was indeed alarmingly obstructed. We were careening right towards a large chunk of debris from the Blumian. It had probably been thrown from the wreck. I reached above my head and pulled down the attached crash bar and loudly instructed Ramius to do the same. Ramius managed to get his crash bar down right as the pod impacted the debris chunk. There was a horrid screeching noise and Ramius and I were thrown against our straps. I briefly had time to think of my family back on Traxius Prime, right before the hull tore open. I watched as Ramius was ripped from his straps. Evidently, he had not put his crash bar on all the way as it popped up and he was sucked through the hull into space. I clung to my crash bar as tightly as I could, but the force was too much. And I was sucked from my seat and through the hull breach as well. It was dead silent in the void and I tumbled wildly, shaking my limbs in the vain hope that someone would see me. My consciousness began to fade right as a large ship that I didn't recognize warped into view. I smiled at that, though I knew that they were already too late to send the recovery pod to get me. I felt moisture leech from my single eye as I went blind. Just as my vision was going completely dark, I felt a strange sensation throughout my body. 
as if all the molecules in my body were violently shaking. I had no time to consider the strange, almost alien markings displayed on the massive vessel. I awoke laying in what felt like a hospital bed. I couldn't tell for sure, as I was completely blind. The lack of pressure and the harsh temperatures of space had evidently been too much for my eye to handle for that long. I could hear someone around me speaking, but they were speaking in a dialect that I had never heard before. My arms and legs were restrained, which alarmed me a little. Suddenly, I felt a piercing sensation in my eye and my vision began to return. I saw a figure standing at my side. They almost looked Traxian before my vision fully returned. But now that it had, I could tell that they were not. The skin on this, uh, creature was pink and looked like it offered little in the way of protection against the elements. They had two eyes, which was weird. Why would you need two eyes? They had long hair that was shaved on the one side where my myriad of electronics was inlaid into what I assumed was the cranium. They looked down at me and continued to speak in that strange dialect I heard earlier, which I now identified as an alien language as this creature was clearly of an alien race not discovered until now. The person looked down at me and then reached up to one of the electronics on their skull and pressed a few small buttons. Can you understand me? questioned the person. They had just spoken to me in my own language perfectly, which jarred me. The Traxians were one of the most advanced races in the galaxy, and even we didn't have translated technology that good. Not to mention, it was clearly linked directly to the alien's brain. I was a bit reckless, I thought. Uh, yes, um, I, I can, I replied. My gaze fixed on the strange, clearly very advanced alien. They looked back at me and smiled. Good. I was hoping it wouldn't take too long for my translator implant to get a fix in your brainwaves, replied the creature. That chip was reading my mind just to translate my language. I was becoming increasingly nervous of these aliens. You are not going to attack me if I remove your restraints, are you? Questioned the alien, eyeing me dubiously. No. You are clearly far more advanced than my race, sir. I'm sure you could dispose of me rather quickly if I tried. I spoke quietly. The alien nodded, clearly not denying my observation, and went about removing the clamps and held me down. I sat up and flexed my digits. I was surprisingly unscathed for how long I'd floated out in the vacuum of space. I have several questions, I finally spoke, returning my gaze to the alien. The alien smiled wildly and made a series of strange noises, apparently amused. I am sure you do. Ask away. I'll answer what I can, replied the alien, meeting my gaze. Rattling around in my head foremost was the question of how my vision had returned, so I figured that was a good starting point. I gestured to my single, large eye. How can I see? I clearly remember going blind after being exposed in vacuum for so long, I questioned, eyeing the alien curiously. Ah, that. We injected your eye with a compound containing nanites, which uh, went through your eyes and repaired the nerves and remoisturized it, explained the alien swiftly. Nanites? What are nanites? I questioned, having never heard of the term before. They are very small robots, basically. Almost microscopic. They work in tandem to perform different tasks. The complexity of the task doesn't even matter, provided there are sufficient number of them, explained the alien making gestures with their upper appendages as they went. I had tiny machines in my eye. That was alarming. Although they had repaired the eye and so far, I did not feel these aliens necessarily wished me any harm. Okay, um, what, uh, sorry, uh, who are you? I questioned, which besides my eye was the one of the biggest questions I had. Now that's an easy one. I'm Amara, and I'm a human, replied the alien now identified as human. What's your name? Um, I'm Jarian. I'm a Traxian, I replied, mimicking the human's earlier response. The human extended one of her upper appendages. Nice to meet you, Jarian, she spoke, appendage still outstretched. I stared at the appendage, wondering exactly what kind of gesture the human was attempting to make. She seemed to catch on to this. It is called a handshake, 
Just grab thy hand and shake it. It's a greeting and sometimes a gesture of respect, she explained, appendage still outstretched. I cautiously held my appendage out and grasped the humans. She shook her appendage, and I did my best to mimic the gesture. There, that's the introduction out of the way. I suppose, uh, any other questions? Asked Amara. Several, um, why have I never met your species before? I asked, genuinely curious. Surely a species as advanced as these humans seem to be would have been encountered by now. Well, uh, even though we are very technologically advanced people, the secrets of Bob Treble have eluded us until fairly recently. In fact, you are aboard the first human starship with a warp drive, and the first to leave our solar system, explained the human. They'd only discovered warp tech recently, and this far along on their advancement. How strange. Warp technology was considered a relatively early technology. Generally, coming right after first man orbital flights in a species development. However, that oddity did explain why no one had ever encountered these humans before. Their home system must be somewhere fairly remote. Okay, uh, one more question, I said, having nearly satisfied my curiosity for the moment. Go ahead, nodded the human. How did you recover me from the void? By, by my calculations, it was already much too late for a recovery. I asked, watching the human carefully. I was very curious about this matter. There was no conceivable way that I could possibly come up with that allowed for me to be recovered from the void. Well, recovered alive, at least. Oh, we just beamed you on board, replied the human simply. Um, what? I questioned, dumbfounded. You know, uh, beamed you on board, you know, like, like teleported, answered the human, seeming confused. You, you, you teleported me? I answered back, absolutely shocked to the core. No species in the galaxy had come close to mastering teleportation technology. Many believed it wasn't even scientifically nor physically possible. Yet here was the human, standing there talking as though it was the commonplace. Yes, we teleported you. I is that a problem? Are you suffering any ill effects from the molecular deconstruction and reconstruction? Amara bombarded me with questions, seeming apparently concerned by my sudden outburst. N no, 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 I'm fine. It's just that no species in the galaxy has even come remotely close to solving teleportation. How did you do it? I affirmed. Oh, it was easy once you were able to link quantum physics and regular physics. Amara started. Wait, what? Quantum physics? What's that? I asked, yet again confused by the foreign term. Quantum physics? It's basically the same as regular physics, except for the really small part of the universe where particles and waves interact, explained Mara. There was a whole other layer to the universe. My head was beginning to hurt. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click. With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just want to give a quick thanks to the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia, Barky, Feudic Yol, Cam Maxwell, Casper Onholtz, White Band 420, Lord Asrakal, Arcalian, and Oakfield.